it's opened and hidden and open and hidden. Welcome back to Arcade. I am Super Tommy, and in this video, we're going to look at creating a settings menu and a toggle button so you can toggle your sound. So we are going to start where the memory match extras course leaves off. Uh, we're going to use the TypeScript version of this project. If you're interested in this, you can go to gumroad.com. Uh, this link here, we're going to put this link in the description below. You're going to learn about the extras for memory match where we go over uh, laying out this project a little bit better and some more uh, coding best practices so you can you can become a better developer so this is what our game looks like if you've seen memory match you walk around and you're supposed to find matches um, in this game that are hidden in these boxes we have a phaser editor 2d version as well it is on our channel we'll link it in the description below as well. All right, so what we're going to do here, we have this UI scene set up, and we're using the UI items from Kenny. If you go to Kenny.nl, you can search for the UI pack, and we're taking his item, uh, his icons pack as well. So we search icon here, his game icons expansion, or no, yeah, not expansion, just this one. We're using this gear here, he's got them in black and white, so we're using the black one. So here's this. Um, game so where memory match extras leaves off and I'm gonna connect my gamepad here we go over a gamepad as well in the course so we've got this connected if I press a you hear that there is a sound you can you know find your, find your matches that's not a match and so what we're gonna want to do is hit this pause button it's gonna slide out a menu and in that menu you're gonna be able to toggle sound uh, on and off so you'll see this in this video all right, so let's refresh this so that it the uh, sound stops playing. All right, so the code here is in TypeScript. Let me do that, let's make this bigger. There we go. All right, so we have the settings modal um, prop class property here and the settings menu. So let me just close this. So here's the settings menu. So this is the class we're gonna implement in this video. So now the whole setup here is pretty easy. Um, it's pretty simple. We're creating this settings button, which is up here and we're setting um, it interactive so that you can mouse over or you know pointer over, pointer out, pointer down, and pointer up, which is a click. So when that click is registered, we're gonna to toggle the settings modal in and out. And that settings modal or settings menu rather is this uh, settings menu class. I should actually call the settings menu. Let's do that. Okay, so this is the just bare bones setup of this UI scene. And we're running this UI scene in the game scene. So this is the game scene. You get this code uh, from the memory match extras course. And what we do is here in create of the game scene, we launch the UI scene. You, you've probably seen this in, in our other videos on the channel. We're launching the scene called UI, which is this UI scene here. We give it the name UI. And if we go to main, you see we import it here and add it to the scene list here. So no magic at all. Uh, we're preloading the asset that we're going to use. We're using three assets. The gray box, which is this box button here. Gray button. No, it's gray box. We're using it as a button. And then we have our gear, which is this gear here. And then that check marks that we're going to use for our toggle button. All right. So back to our UI scene. Now let's go to our settings menu. So we're going to implement the settings menu class together in this video. So first thing we're passing in the scene so that we can create game objects uh, to be controlled. So first thing we're gonna do is actually make a container because we wanna move everything together. So our settings menu is gonna have a panel, which is gonna be similar to this, but we're gonna make it a different size. We're gonna use the nine slice plugin, which is already in this project. Uh, you can learn more about it in the course as well, but we also have on blog.arcade.co a recent article is uh, nine slice scaling using the same phaser three nine slice plugin that we're using here. So go to blog.arcade.co and check out this blog post. It goes through how you can use the nine slice plugin. We'll link this in the description notes below as well. All right, so first let's make a container. We're actually gonna store this container. So we're gonna tween it uh, in and out. So private container, 
And we're definitely going to set it. So we're using the exclamation mark here as the uh, non-null assertion operator. Um, and then we're doing phaser.gameobjects.container. And here, we're going to make a container in scene.add.container. So now we want it to be here, right? So what we know about this position is, let's get the width here, this dot scale, no, not this dot scale, scene, scene dot scale. So we're gonna get the width of the scene and of, of the game from the scale manager. And then we're gonna do width minus 10, right? So which is gonna be like right here. I'm just gonna guess and say 50 for Y, It'll have no children. And so that's where the container 00, zero is gonna be, right here. Now, next, we need to make a panel using the nine slice plugin, which we already have installed. And so we're gonna do panel scene dot add dot nine slice. And so just uh, real quick, we import the nine slice plugin right here, right? We have this import. Then we add it to plugins global over here in main.ts. All right, nine slice plugin. So X, Y, so we're actually gonna do it at zero, zero. So we're gonna add this to the container. So zero, zero for the container, like we mentioned is right here, 1050, roughly over there. Uh, we're gonna make this, let's say 150 wide and let's say 50 tall. Uh, we're gonna use so we have a bunch of texture keys already from this project, UI panel. So all this is, is an enum here in the texture keys file. This is uh, all explained in the Mary Match Extras course, but mainly we're just creating a, a enum here with uh, different constants for the various texture keys that we're using. So we're gonna have to type it over in different places and have spelling errors and then wonder what, what happens uh, when, it, when things don't work. Okay, so that's the texture we're using and then the offset. So we're gonna use 24 for this. Um, there's more information about this in the nine slice plugins article, but basically it's the uh, size here for the corners, like how tall or wide it should be so that when it does the nine slice stretching, um, it'll be correct. So it could go smaller, but we're gonna go 24. That's a pretty safe number. All right, so there's the panel. So this dot container dot add uh, panel. So let's see if this works really fast, right, with minus 10, okay. So we do create it, yeah, so there it is, ah, yes. So now what we wanna do is actually adjust the origin because we're gonna slide this panel uh, in from the right. So it'll be easier to think about if we set the origin instead of zero, zero, which is over here, if we did instead, so X one, so the far right side, and then Y zero, So you see here, it'll slide in, we'll add the animation later, but basically in the in state, it'll look like this. This may be too small, let's make this 200. That's 1200, 200. Good. Next, we want to put the toggle button uh, right here, basically like right here, and then we'll just say sound for toggling the sound. So let's see, const toggle button scene.add.image, it's gonna be a plain image. We're gonna add this to, so it's gonna be basically minus panel.width, right? So panel.width is 200, and, but it starts over here. So minus panel.width would be here. And let's say we add 10, um, and then our button is gonna be origin 00, zero but we can change that if, let's say we just do, let's say 15. Let's see, let's see how this looks. Uh, texture is going to be small button. And let's just confirm that. Small button, yeah. So you could, of course, create these into the textures enum here. So you don't have to type it out. So that's what we did in the course. You can do it yourself as well. Okay, so small button. Here's the button. This dot container dot add toggle button. There it is, it's not in the right place uh, because let's set origin. So by default images have origin at 0 0.5. So right in the center, right there. So we're gonna make it top left corner over here. Okay, so 10 is, 15 is too much, maybe 10. 
better. Eight. Okay. So that's the button. And we're going to put a check mark on it when it is checked. So then that has to be toggled. So let's make a class property here. We'll call this check mark. And it will be set phaser.gameobjects.image. And so this dot check mark, it's scene.add.image. And let's see, so toggle button dot x plus toggle button dot width times 0 0.5. So we're doing this because toggle button dot x is over here. We want the middle of toggle button. So the x should be in the middle. And then same thing here, toggle button dot y plus toggle button dot height times half so that we get it in the middle. And I believe this is called a check mark for the texture. Let's check. Yep, check mark. Great. And this will also be added, this dot add, this dot check mark. Now let's see. And there's a check mark. Great. Okay, last thing, well, for adding, for, for sure, making this display is um, the text. We'll just call this text, scene.add.text. And we are going to put it at toggle button dot x plus toggle button dot width width plus 10. Now you see you got to do all this math yourself. If you check out our phaser editor 2D video, you can see a different way where you we can using the tool uh, lay out your scene visually, which is uh, much more convenient. So toggle button dot y. And then our text is going to be sound. And then let's say we give it a color. Oops, color, let's get this, let's make this easier to read here. So this is X, this is Y, this is the text we're gonna put into it, and then this is the text style, so color is going to be black. We could also do this. These are just CSS values. Font size, we're gonna make this 28, uh, okay. Let's see how this looks. This dot container dot add text. Not bad, not bad. It could be lower, I feel like, right? Plus four. Okay, too much. Plus three. All right, let's say that's good. You can also adjust this uh, to your heart's content on, in, in your game. Okay, so that's good. So now, what we want to do is when we highlight over this toggle button here, that it'll uh, give us some sort of um, indicator. So for example, here, it uh, dims a little bit. Then when you press on it, it changes the color. So what we're going to do is have it dim, undim, and then press on it, the, X, uh, the check mark goes away or appears, depending on the state it's currently in. So toggle button, that's the background here, the button background dot set interactive so now we can interact with it so then dot on we're going to use phaser dot input dot events dot game object pointer pointer over so when the mouse is over the button we are going to toggle button dot set tint and give it a dark gray color so let's go look up a color picker and let's just say something like this just copy this, drop it in here, then scroll up. So dot on. Now next, so it's over, then there's out, phaser dot input dot events dot theme object out. So this is when the pointer has no longer over within the bounds of this uh, box. And what we want to do then is set it back to white or no tint. So white basically uh, leaves the color alone, whatever the color of the button was. So over, out, and then we want dot up, phaser, dot input, dot events, dot game object pointer up. So this is after you press the mouse button down and then release it, so it's a click. So we're gonna toggle this also back to white after you click on it, so you would have been in the over state, and then you press it still over, up, now, you know, the, the button should go back to what it was when it's out state. 
And here, we're going to toggle this out. So let's make a method, private toggle sound. And we're going to call that here. Great. So now, let's see. Is the sound currently active? So let's just go with let active. Right? We're going to store this uh, check mark visible. So the check mark is visible, that means the sound is active. That's how we're just gonna use the check marks visible as a proxy for whether the sound is, should be on or not. So this is a toggle, so what we can do is set active to what active, to the opposite of what active is. So let's say we're here, active is true, we, we click on it, active is true, so we click on it, let's just do this again. We click on it, we go to toggle sound, we get the active, which is the visible visibility of the check mark, which is currently true, Right, so we're doing the toggle. Now we want to set the whether the sound is active or not to the inverse of active. So if it was active, now it is not active. And if it wasn't active, the check mark was not visible, it would now be active. So this is a toggle. You invert whatever the value was. Then you do this dot scene. Nope. This okay, I'll store the scene. Uh, let's store the scene reference scene because we're passing a scene in and then do this dot scene get scene then we're going to do this dot scene dot scene so we're going to get the scene manager from this the ui scene dot uh, oh no no we just keep the sound we don't need to see that ignore that i just said that we're going to get the sound from the scene dot mute active and then lastly, let's set this check mark visible to the new value of active. Now let's see. All right, so that's working. That's disappearing. All right, let's my gamepad here. Start. Uh, oh, well, okay, let's just redo this. I think there's a state issue. Okay, so you hear sound. Now you, that didn't work. Let's see. Well, that is a bug. Okay, let's let's see what's going on here. So sound is mute is. F oh, okay. Yes. So this is a bit confusing, right? So mute should be sound should be muted if the check mark is not active. So. This actually may be confusing. We can maybe rewrite this. Let's see if this works. All right, here we hear sound. Click, click. Okay, now the sound is mute, muted. It's off. Click and turn it back on. So let's let's try this instead. Um, okay, quiet down. Okay, is mute. So is mute is if the check mark is visible, it is not mute, right? So let's do that instead. So is mute. Let's just invert mute. So this would just be is mute, but then whether the check mark is visible or not will still be the invert of is mute. So I guess it, uh, let's just make sure this works. It's gonna depend on your preference here. So we have sound, click on it, the sound is muted, unclick, it comes back. I guess it depends on which version of the two you think uh, makes the most sense in your mind. Um, could be either. So now let's actually make this um, menu come in and out. So let's add a show. I'm gonna call show to actually show it and then call hide to hide it. All right, so to show this.scene.tweens.add, target is going to be this.container, right? So we added everything to a container so that we can move them all together very easily without moving every single object uh, by itself, one at a time. And so the X is going to be, this is actually the end result that we want, right? So width minus 10 is where we want it to be at the end. Let's get width there, width minus 10. This is the end result. Duration, let's say this. Let's give it an ease, phaser.math.easing.sign.inout. So that'll do that. And then this dot sign. Okay, 
Okay, good. So that'll show it. So that means when we hide, just copy this and change it. So what we're going to do is send it far to the right off screen entirely. So we can do times 1.5, for example. You can play around with different values. You could just maybe plus 300. That would probably work too. Since this is 200, let's do that. Plus 300. So with plus 300, it will be off screen. Is that going to be enough? Yeah, I think that's good. And then, so we're going to want to start it off screen, right? So you won't see it. Good. Now we're going to go back to our UI scene. We have our settings menu we created here. Now here's where we want to toggle it. So now we need to actually know when it's open. So, but first settings menu dot show. And let's just give it a try. There it is. But pressing again, we'll only do show. So we need to actually call hide if the settings menu is open. Now we could have a toggle settings menu as well, and you can implement it similar to this, but we'll just do it slightly different way uh, to give you another uh, perspective on, on how you can do this. Um, so let's just go private opened, and let's say false. And then we're gonna do a property here, call it is open. It's gonna return this dot opened. Okay, so it starts off closed, so not opened. And then once we go to show, we're going to set opened to true. And if, you may not need this, but if opened, return. So we're already, already showing, don't, don't bother showing again. Uh, and then in this case, this dot opened is false when we hide. And in this case, it's if not opened. Also, don't do any more work because we're already hidden. Okay, back to UI scene here. So in this case, if this dot settings menu dot is open, so if it is open, we're gonna close. And then if it is closed, not open, we're gonna show and hide. Okay, let's see. Yeah, it's opened and hidden and open and hidden. So let's play our game. Bring it in, sound off. Now, of course, the game can still play with the settings modal open. You may like that, you may not. I'm gonna show you right now how to how to do it so that when it opens, um, the settings, the game will actually just pause. So you see this in, in a lot of games. When the settings menu is brought up, the game automatically pauses. So we're gonna to wanna to pause the game when this uh, settings menu comes up, comes out. So Let's do it like this. So this dot scene dot pause, right? So we can pause the scene that's currently running at this key. And so now we have this scenes enum that has all the um, scene keys. So if we go here, just like the texture keys before, we just have these scene constants or enum. In the modern JavaScript version, these are consts or constants. So we don't have to make any typing errors and we just reuse this wherever we need the scene keys. So we do that, pause, and then from pause, when we open, we want to pause, and then when we, um, sorry, when we hide, we want to resume. So when we show, we want to pause. So this is pause, good. This should be resume. Okay. Now let's see how this goes. Get my controller, press A. Moving around, you can hear sound. Countdown's going. And it's paused. Now the sound's still playing because the sound is not muted, but you could also mute the sound. And there it is. Now we undo this, game continues. Right? Boom. Paused, I'm pressing it, and it's not moving. Bring back the sound, and there we go. So that's a settings menu in phase of three. Um, and for pausing the game when the menu comes out, creating a toggle button to toggle sound on and off using the mute property on the sound manager or sound plugin. So that's it for this video. If you want to learn more about memory match extras, do check out the link to the Gumroad page in the description below. Uh, you'll learn a whole bunch of things, including the gamepad. We've got a bunch of this thing here, the nine slice plugin, if you want to see it in action, preloading, code organization, debugging, and some other tips to help you become a better game developer. Um, that's it for this video. If you enjoyed what you saw, 
be sure to hit like and subscribe for more videos on making games in Phaser 3.